Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope everyone's adjusted to the time difference. It is definitely brighter throughout the day. I think it sets around 8 or 8.30 now. So that's nice. Um, before we begin, let us start with the call to worship taken from John chapter 15, verses 4 to 5 and 9 to 10. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for another brand new day. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We pray that you help us to prepare our hearts for worship, Lord, and to just rededicate our lives to you, to remain in you, Lord and to be connected to you as the as branches to the vine. We pray that you continue to be with us, Lord, as we sing these songs of worship, as we listen to your message, as we prepare for Easter Sunday. Father, God, to celebrate your son uh, raising from the dead, Lord. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Please stand for our first song.
please be seated. Please stand for the last song. It seems I forgot to put the slides in, in the order. <laughs> it's like I knew it in the back of my head. And I decided to wait until after editing, and that was a mistake. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> All right, here's the last song before the message. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today's scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9, 
and Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a coat inside, in this, outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that coat? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people, many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and, and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to, the, to know the word that sustains the weary. He, he wakes me morning by morning, wakes my ear to listen like the one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have, set, have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who then will bring charges against me. Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made them he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue Every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the name, this is the, okay. This is the word of God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, good to see you all. Welcome those who are watching online or in the future you watch it online. <laughs> there are a few announcements. Um, the church retreat planning committee uh, will meet after the choir rehearsal. So those who are <clears throat> singing in the choir about 12.30 will start rehearsing. So approximately 1 o'clock the church retreat. Uh, the retreat day is already set. The committees um, want to have a fundraising brunch. Um, the breakfast is, the brunch is free, just make your donation. So we give scholarship out, uh, it's printed, okay? Um, there are, at least I know, three pastries and then plus coffee and tea. <laughs> so come early at that, uh, next Sunday, that's a, no, 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 that's a um, um, fundraising Sunday. Uh, the coming Sunday, um, that's Easter Sunday, right? We'll have coffee and tea and pastry too. So, so that's Easter Sunday, that's down in the, but the, last, the last one. Then the Chinese Christian Union have a Holy Week, so different activities, Good Friday service, English and Mandarin at daytime, and then the English, I mean, 
that's Cantonese and Mandarin daytime. And uh, Good Friday serve English speaking and uh, translating the Cantonese in First Baptist in, um, at about 7.30 to 8. So Mary and I will participate in that one. Okay, uh, good news. Actually, church retreat, we already have 42, 43 very firm, uh, pretty even in English and Chinese speaking. So we thank God for that. So we talked to Christine this morning. We will uh, extend it to the max 50. So we are getting there for... Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you for the morning we come together to worship you. Thank you, Lord. We live in such a beautiful area, San Francisco Bay Area. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful church, the Christian community that love one another, supporting one another especially the English congregation and um, Chinese-speaking congregation, we work together to bring the glory to your name, to spread the good news in Chinatown, in San Francisco, in the Bay Area. And Lord God, I really give you thanks for those who donate time, dedicate themselves in the teaching ministry, fellowship ministry, and outreach ministries. And Lord, as we come before your throne of grace, we ask for your mercies and your blessings upon us as we will have different outreach opportunities to Chinatown and to edify the Christians, to build them up to serve you. And Lord, we thank you for your love and your empowerment. At this time, you also remember those elderly who are, have to remain in the home, convalescent home, Lord. Be with them, encourage them. Once upon a time, they were very active in our church. We thank you, Lord, for their service. You know who they are, Lord. We also remember that quite a few family traveling and visiting relatives in different parts different part of the world. Have run them journey mercies. We thank you, Lord. You brought back those who are in our midst. Continue to be with us. We pray for the world peace, the wars going on, and many children, women, and elderly are definitely suffering. And God, forgive us the humanity that our human being, how we fall short of your glory due to the selfishness and just greed that cause many pains and problems and sufferings. And God, we thank you for Christ, for this week of Passion Week that we, the triumphal entry and also the death of Christ on the cross. And next Sunday, celebration of the resurrection. We thank you for Jesus. In Christ's name, we do ask and pray. Amen. <laughs> As we follow the Lent, season. Um, so this will be the one we call the Passion Week and the Triumphal Entry. Um, most of us, probably all of us, who are in the church in one way or the other, that we kind of know that this is the Triumphal Entry about Christ entering Jerusalem. And then throughout the whole week, activities, um, and then die on the cross on Friday, and they resurrected on Sunday. So I asked them about 
30% of the world population will celebrate the Resurrection Sunday next Sunday? Okay, so let's look at a different continent and different brand of the Christianity and does anybody celebrate the resurrection of Christ, the celebration um, of Jesus? But this week, uh, at least today, I'd like to share with you like a mountain top experience first, triumphal entry, and then going down to the valley, suffering servant, and then obedient servant. And then the exhortation, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess one day. So let's look at that look of mountain top, go down like a V and go back up. So, as I share with you that, <clears throat> okay, this is, uh, I will do that for the Chinese speaking. So, number one is uh, the triumphal entry. So, we talk about many people who spread the coal and also the branches, and Jesus entered with a coat, a donkey. Um, <clears throat> it has a background. The king used to ride a donkey back then. Um, it's different from the Roman. Roman, they were horses when they have a triumphal entry. Then all the looting, whatever they get, follow. And also then the slave, you know, that the people they capture. So they bring it into Rome, and then the celebration, people would cheer. But Jesus came into this uh, way of triumphal entry. It's a little bit different, uh, but still very, it is a big display in a way. So in the Jewish history, there are Maccabee uh, revolt against the oppressor. Now, you have to understand that Israel is a very small country. If you know geography, it's very small. Um, but on both sides, down south, we are Egypt. A humongous country, powerful country. And then on the upper or upper right side, you have what they call Assyria, Babylon. Those are big kingdoms. So constantly, throughout that case, the two powerful kingdoms, whoever rule, you know, it's Assyria, Babylonian, or Persia, they're up there. So Egypt's down here, and they're a little tiny country in between. So when you're in a world power, you want to just gobble up everything. It's not like today, United States. I'm a citizen of the U.S. You know, when I travel, my passport can go over hundred something country. Um, I went to Samoa, American Samoa. It's yes, so different. Uh, you imagine small country. You know, you, we United States can just kind of like. I was surprised that we have over 110 country. We have military base. You imagine that just like this nowadays. Um, U.S. citizens always kind of protected. Anything wrong, you can just go into a U.S. embassy. Uh, they will help you out. Plus, our U.S. dollars are very, very useful. So it's, a, it's that type of environment. So whoever ruled, they would just kind of like to gobble up the other one. So Egypt would move back up and, and push around. So, so this little country in between, you just kind of like, Okay, who's going to rule us now? But with their mentality, the Jews, the Israelites, they would like to fight back. Um, they always look back to David. That's a glorious time. So when you look at today's um, event, the war was going on, dominate the headline, then you would understand when you read the Old Testament. Um, so it's not the first time they, you know, they have the pressure coming in and out. So I kind of study the Old Testament. It's interesting. Um, they are going down to Gaza. That's what the Philistines, you heard about Philistines in the Old Testament? They're constantly fighting. That's what the area coming in and out. So with them, 
mindset. They don't like to be ruled over by the foreigner. So periodically, they would just push back. And um, they won once in a while. So once in a while, they would come in and the oppressor would come in and crush them completely. That's why they destroyed the temple completely. Um, so during this time, they were thinking about hundred some years ago, Maccabean, Maccabean revolt, and they kick out the oppressor. They have peaceful time for a short time, but still they feel that, you know, um, uh, the national pride, we rule ourselves now. Of course, there's another big country, will, empire will come back. So they always look back to some kind of Messiah, Savior, or some kind of military mind or the mindset that will push out whoever try to rule them. Now with the miracle worker, Jesus, a great teacher, I can imagine that. That's why the crowd like to push him to be the king, to be the leader. Now you can imagine Jesus as a leader. <clears throat> If it's more militant, if he, he can heal, right? If any soldier that's injured, you come to Jesus or heal, said by a word. You can go back and fight again. Would you like that? You don't need medic. Right? You can perform miracle. We know that two fish fly low, and whatever low you can get, unlimited what? Supply of food. <laughs> You can keep on fighting. I'm going to just use my mind. If you and someone have unlimited supply of drinks and food and keep the soldier going, if they're injured, even Jesus can resurrect the dead, right? Just by a word or click a finger, go back. I would like that. I would, if you are being oppressed all this time, you get someone like that. And a great teacher can also teach and motivate and just encourage them. Fantastic. I say, you, you are not going to lose, right? <laughs> you keep on going. I can understand why the people seeing this, yeah, this could be a real thing, a Messiah, because they have so many um, chances before, so many so-called leaders. They got all defeated. So that's why I'm so happy. Finally, let's try it. This is the king. This is the Messiah. That's why they say, Hosanna. Most of you know that word already. Hosanna means save us. Literally translation, save us. And then later you will become what? Give glory to God or praise God. So you can imagine the hope of the people, the stirring up. They're always second or third class, being crushed by different empire. And now this is the one we talk about. They could raise the dead. They could, he can feed us. They can just keep us going and motivate us. Now that's why they come in. Jesus came in with very a great display, buying a donkey like the old king. That old, you know, that, that King David back in those days. They were so happy, jubilee, and, and just say, this is the chance. That's why they're chanting. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who come in the name of the Lord. So, this is a mountaintop experience going into Jerusalem. Of course, Christ, Jesus has a different thinking. I don't want to be that type of king at this time. We're fully human and also fully um, God. That will come later. What he said is uh, that Isaiah, there are quite a few of what he calls servant psalm. That is the prediction about Christ, and this is one of them. The most famous one is of Psalm, uh, Isaiah 53. Every time when I come to read that psalm, it almost brings me to tears. 
I'm not the easy one that stirs my emotion. If you really want to read it, go home and read a few times. Isaiah 53. This is Isaiah 50. I think it's that third servant psalm, but we may remember that. So, kind of foretelling what the servant, the suffering servant, have to go through. He said, I offer my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from the mocking and spitting. So this is kind of like the sight, the scene that Jesus um, in a trial and dying, beating. That's why for our suffering, his suffering that so we can be healed, we can be whole. It's not easy. No one likes to suffer. Especially last week, I already talked about, you know, that the destiny, the going into Jerusalem, going in to be crucified. It's not easy. He's still a human, fully human, fully God in our theology. Any one of you like to suffer? I don't think so, right? Knowing you, myself, I don't want to be, I don't want to suffer. Um, it's my nature. I like to be happy. I think human nature, we like to have fun, right? We like to have meaningful life, purposeful life, but not a suffering life, as far as you know ahead of time. That's why in my prayer, I already share with you, maybe one, a few times, but more on Chinese speaking, I want to die without any pain, any sickness. Chinese are 沒病沒痛沒疾而終啊. In other words, no pain, no sickness, just let me die peacefully. Would you like that? Most young people, you don't even think about it. At my age, I start thinking about make preparation. I don't want to suffer. Who likes to suffer? At this age, you know, things come out, you know, automatically. That's I don't want to say it out, but you know, I know the places. <laughs> oh, the spot injury and the car accident, the cause. Now is the time that the pain. I have to do slowly, cannot run, cannot jump. Just do a little chai chi, warm exercise. That's it. I'm walking a lot. So Jesus, being about 33 approximately, had to go in, knowing nail on the cross, about six inches, those nails, six to eight inches, right on the wrist, the most, sub, most painful way of dying. Um, it's a fast death, there's no problem. Fine squat, bang, or injection, but you die, you know, in seconds. This type of death, it just hang you out there on the crawl, public display. Most likely it's naked. That's why it's kind of a scaring tactic. You know, you want to resurrect, you want the uh, insurrection, or you want to really go against the empire, the Roman Empire at this time. That's what you don't get. And um, they parade on the street, it's a scaring tactic. We figure out probably it takes about two or three days for an average human to die. Just hang there and the suffocation. No one likes to suffocate. I will share with you as a lifeguard that, you know, when you are drowning or try to, you know, if you ever submerge in the water, there's no air. It's a very painful experience. You, you just... Nothing to grab on. Dying on the cross is like that, the suffocation. Slow death until they collapse the organ, mainly the lung. But you hang there. So day and night. So this is a very painful suffering, dying for our sin. So you really want to read about, beside the Isaiah 50, go for Isaiah 53. Then talk about the obedient servant. 
talk about Christ being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Touched on that. But the verses before that was printed in the insert. He was a God. And just forget that theity come down to become a hum, uh, human, the human side. That's why then he nailed on the cross, he could say, you know, he could call 10,000 angels, a legend, and to deliver him. But that's God's plan, obedience. It's another lesson it's not easy to learn, to obey, to obey God's will, to obey what the Bible has to teach. It's not popular. It's very kind of culture in our society. But we are faithful to the Bible teaching that Christ's obedience, fulfilling his purpose in life. Each of you, I really appreciate your coming, your serving, being faithful, and obedient to God's calling you into different type of ministry. By doing that, you give the glory to God. Sometimes you say, how come we don't see the growth? How come we don't see the, what they refer to, numerous, numerous growth, numeral growth, number? I often tell them it's not the number that comes. It is the faithfulness. It is your obedience to God that counts. I often talk to those people, say, you know, the Bible talks about the 5,000 men came to listen to Jesus for days, and then Jesus performed the miracle, feeding them, right? Five loaves and two fish. You know what's after that, what Jesus said? How many of you know that? Just raise your hand. None? Very humble group. The following chapters of the Bible, Jesus rebuilt that group of people. You are coming to me, not because you want to listen to me or following what my teaching, obeying my commandments. You are coming after me for food. In other words, what you can get out from me for the physical pleasure or comfort. Read that. After the feeding of 5,000, we stop on that. That's the following event. We have food, right? Next Sunday, we have food serving the pastry. And then we have fundraising. <laughs> I love to cook. I love to eat. I eat so much. Some of the church members won't believe Pastor William, you eat a lot. <laughs> I eat simple food. Good food, fresh. Nothing wrong with food. But when you put that into a wrong perspective, just like the Jew back in those days, I mentioned about putting Jesus as a king, as a, someone leading the revolution, unlimited resource. That's what Christ is about. It's the obedience. It's that obeying God, doing the task, doing what you are called to do. That is important. Do not compare. I do not compare to, say, a you know, big church. That's why I came from a couple of blocks when I received Christ and baptized there. Pack the century. Every Sunday, three to four times, just rotating. People line up out there. But now, a few decades later, they fold up the English ministry no more. I talked to the senior pastor, which is tiny speaking, um, retreat speaker. He spoke, the pictures out there, right? You see how big the group was? He can draw a crowd. He is a very solid preacher. No more. No more. 
But I said, you know, we still have, what, 20 something people in our English congregation? You don't have to come. I already did. No. <laughs> That's the way. Plus, the Chinese are growing. It was 30 something. In less than a year now, it's about 40 something already. So we combine, yeah, we're still not 100 yet. But we will get there. You are being faithful. God will shake up a feel that they come to church without different motive, which is not pleasing to God. But I said those who are coming back with all the difficulties going on in San Francisco, the pandemic, you are here. And those who are watching online now, thank you. And that's important. That's what the obedient servant, that's the obeying God. One day when we all see God, what God can say is, I only need one or two sentences, basically, you know, good toward and faithful servant. That's all. Good and faithful servant. Nothing glamorous. If God can say it's a good and faithful servant, with all this hardship and all this time, when I look at my life, I say, I thank God who grew up in this beautiful area, serving in the Bay Area, ministering. And God opened different doors, and I just stepped in. God will close doors. With all the shame and sin and all this, God said, accepting all of us and encourage us to go on. So, it's the valley. But we'll have that mountain top again. That's what, therefore God exalted him, talk about Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue and knowledge, and knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, one day, right there, mountain top experience again. We don't have to pray, we don't have to teach, we don't have to do a thing. They all, everyone, believer or unbeliever, they realize it. Jesus is the Lord of Lords, and then what? King of Kings. That's what we are hoping for. We will see that. You will see Christ in your heart. You have the salvation. Confess your sin. One day we'll see that. That's why it makes everything meaningful, what we are going through. It's not just a little religious experience and the ritual we have to do. It's not. We learn how to pray, worship, Life goes by so fast. We celebrate the birth and then the children growing up and the youth and the young adult marry or, you know, with family. Median adult, then we got group of senior adult. I'm the senior here. I'm the only one here. But now in the Chinese congregation, it's a circle of life, season of life. It's beautiful. But you are faithful, you obey God, humble yourself, continue to serve. One day we'll get there. We'll see that for sure. Look at that. Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Is that beautiful? So that's um, why I'd like to share with you this message. It's a triumphal entry. Up and then down and then up again. So next Sunday, we celebrate that one thing that threatens our humanity is death to Christ. We have no fear. At least I have no fear about death. I like a peaceful death. I like a just say quiet, non-ceremonial death. And um, I'm going to put on my slideshow one of these days and put it all together, do my thing. <laughs> why you have control, why not, you know? And um, just enjoy life to the fullness. You know, enjoy one another, eat well, go to places you like, share with the people, you know, your, your, 
life experience. So that's living. So that's the way to turn this back to the worship team. Okay. Please stand for the last song.
you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the time of worship and music. We thank you for the young and the old and the middle aged. They are all here to worship you. We thank you for their faithfulness. Reward them, Lord. Now, as we dismiss this place and go into ministry, grant us the power, grant us the peace in you. Amen. Thank you.